Let's move to the next session. Uh, it's Andre uh, Maindoc from Silanese that will <coughs> talk about uh, uh, silver pasties. So, Andre, stage is yours. Thank you. So, hello and welcome. So, last year I was standing here and giving a presentation about biosensor materials. Um, still under DuPont, so in the meantime we have been uh, purchased by Selene, so I also have to um, yes, um, get familiar myself um, with a new name of the company. Um, so uh, biosensor materials is uh, very low currents, small signals, and you try to use, and now we are going directly to the other side, to the opposite side. Today, so I'm talking about um, silver sintering materials um, and paste. Um, and uh, yes, uh, the, I will explain a little bit the use and then how give you a little bit an introduction and an overview uh, how we are developing paste and what needs to be tested and what needs to be tested for the processes um, behind this. So let's start with a short introduction. Um, so as already said, we are now on the opposite side. Everything where you have, everywhere, where you have to handle uh, high currents, high power, um, and to transform something from AC, DC, to, um, from AC to DC, from DC to AC, or uh, transform uh, currents from one stage to, uh, level to the other, um, there you need high power chips for switching something. So I, I think that I, um, it's just a short introduction where um, we are now in, in which field we are. There is um, the electrical vehicles, um, all the, the, the switches uh, to switch the current in the motor to handle um, the power from the battery to, to the motor from the charging station. So, so we are in this area at the moment. Um, we are talking about this one. Um, so, and the target is to um, attach high power chips um, which have an extreme stress um, and then to build good connections. So historically, um, it was often used um, soldered connections uh, to attach the chips um, and this works quite well, still well, um, uh, in particular for silicon based chips, but um, the development is going further, uh, the power density is going higher and higher. Um, and here I, um, I'm not a specialist in, in semiconductor development, but um, that is a, the range and the path forward. Um, and uh, yes, you see and hear more and more that silicon carbide based chips um, or semiconductors um, are produced and manufactured. So um, one Big advantage is a uh, thermal conductivity. Um, so I want to point out just this data point. Um, and, and this is allowing that the silicon carbide based chips um, can handle much higher power. So, so to go up into the power. And then the next generation afterwards is already waiting. Um, uh, and there is, um, yes, I don't want to go in detail with it, uh, the electron mobility. <laughs> Uh, which in the end uh, gives uh, the freedom to work with higher frequencies um, with the chip. So that is a tendency of development. And when you're going um, to the silicon carbide chips, they typically, uh, due to the higher um, power density, the temperature is going up and then you're running into problems with soldered connections or you must do very, um, uh, yes, also some costful things to go to other uh, solder connections and other alloys. Um, but in the end, uh, what we are talking about when, when switching it, it's uh, heating up, heating down. Um, in, in this whole area, typically we are discussing about how to handle the CTE mismatch um, in the different layers of the build-up. So CTE is thermal, um, uh, the coefficient of thermal expansion. So I show the next slide. So that is a typical build-up. Uh, yes, uh, there are other build-ups, but, but all looks very similar. You have different layers. So here, um, I think in the center, you have a, a direct bonded copper substrate, and then you take a um, silver sintering paste or, or some kind of dye attached material. It can also be a solder, and then take 